My name is Andrea Chow. I'm with the County of San Mateo, and I'll be your first presentation this evening. I will be talking about Energy Upgrade California Home Upgrade Program. And then after that, we're going to have a presentation from Jesse Denver from Vote Solar, who will present on Peninsula Sunshares. And then after our two presentations, we're going to have a lot of time for Q&A. And we also have contractors here, participating contractors from Energy Upgrade, and participating contractors for the Peninsula Sunshares program. So you'll have time to mingle and ask questions. And so all of that, those questions will be at the end. So I encourage you to write things down as questions pop up, because we'll, we'll really hold that to the end. And then, of course, we'll have the raffle at the end. OK? So let me go ahead and get started, and I'll bring up my presentation. Great. So again, my name is Andrea Chow. I'm with the County of San Mateo Office of Sustainability. And I support the Bay Area Regional Energy Network programs. We're a collaboration of all nine Bay Area counties, which means this program is, uh, has a regional approach and it's applicable in all of the Bay Area counties. And it's funded by a ratepayer fund on your PG&E bill. And so I'm going to be talking to you about why do an energy upgrade at all. And so hopefully you guys all have the hand handouts that were on the table, but if you don't, um, Rachel can help pass them out because they kind of help um, with the slides. Uh, but energy, uh, we're gonna talk first about why do an energy upgrade at all. And the purpose of this is really to inform you about the rebates and incentives we have available through our program. And it's thinking about uh, insulation, duct sealing, uh, replacing your appliances, all to maximize the energy efficiency from our program. And so I'm gonna start with the basics. I'm gonna start with talking about the whole house approach to energy efficiency. So here you can see a typical multi-story home, and this diagram really illustrates where there are leakages in typical homes. And so the red arrows indicate leakages out of the home, and so you can see that there are, leak, there are leaks from the attic uh, coming out from the duct system, and then the blue arrows indicate those leakages into the home, um, and so you can see that air is leaking through the dryer vents, through, through your windows, through the crawl space. And so when you think about it, if you're doing any conditioning to your home, whether it's heating or cooling air, you're conditioning air that's essentially being lost through the walls and the windows. So you, you might think that you're throwing your dollars out the door by, by conditioning this air and it's escaping. And so we want to bring it back to the basics and think about this whole house as a system and think about sealing the home envelope, which is outlined in red at the top right corner. And so our program is about uh, work, all of our systems working together in a home to maximize energy efficiency. And so some of you might feel the draftiness in your home or uh, in that problem in home comfort. And it's, it's, it's hard to see visually, but that's why we have tests. And so this, this shows where air leakage is, incur is occurring through these infrared tests. And so I wanted to show you guys a few typical uh, problems we see in Bay Area homes. Uh, one of these big problems is insulation. Sometimes we find that there are huge insulation gaps in people's homes, and then sometimes we find that there's no insulation. And so these are things that uh, you can use our program for rebates on. And um, also uh, looking at losing heated or cooled air through the duct system. And so this is disconnected vents and leaky ducts. So these are common problems we see in Bay Area homes. And so this program exists. Uh, it's using the whole house approach to combine several related measures like attic insulation, duct sealing, air conditioner, and energy efficient windows to maximize your energy savings, also increase that home comfort, and of course, reduce your utility bills. And so I want to talk to you guys about the two programs we support here, Home Upgrade and Advanced Home Upgrade. And we have a sheet of flyer for you for both. And so Home Upgrade is a program through Energy Upgrade California. 
So we have our rebates and incentives, and then we also have a home upgrade advisor service uh, that's free of charge. And then, of course, we train our, our participating contractors who we have here tonight, and they're all they're trained in the safety and of our, our program as well as in all the energy efficiency that I just went through. So typical benefits that our homeowners experience when they go through this program. So again, conserving energy and lowering your utility bills. And then for a lot of people, it's often about increasing the home comfort and how you feel in your home. And then as I said before, when you have uh, air coming in through your home, it affects the air quality. And so when you seal up that bu building envelope, you can start to control that. And so improving indoor air quality is also a huge concern to people. And then finally, adding value to your home and then reducing greenhouse gas emissions. And I'm gonna walk you through the two rebate options we have through our program. And I'll start with home upgrade. So home upgrade is a menu-based approach to the rebate system. It, uh, there's a point value associated with each measure. And so you can get up to $3,000 with this system. And for the advanced home upgrade, the main difference here is that advanced home upgrade requires an advanced um, an energy assessment, and then your rebate and your savings are based on the modeled energy savings. So one, we have a menu-based approach, and on the other hand, we have an approach based on modeled energy savings of your home, okay? And there's different uh, incentive amounts for each. And so what's the difference between these two programs? And like, what's better for, for you? But let me tell you, when to choose home upgrades. So this is, this is usually for the homeowner. I mean, maybe you already updated your heating and cooling system, so you would just want to do a few more measures. Um, or maybe you just want a quick and easy approach with choosing three off the menu. So again, this is the whole house approach, which takes several measures together. So you have to do three measures. Um, and, and then after that, your rebate amount is simply based on those measures you chose. And so those eligible upgrades are on the back of your handout um, for home upgrade. And so there are things like duct sealing, duct replacement and insulation, uh, whole building air sealing, and replacing your furnaces, your air conditioner, and then the high efficiency windows, which was new and added this year. All right, and then our second program is Advanced Home Upgrade. And so this is for the homeowner who's really looking to do a comprehensive update. Um, maybe you're already thinking of remodeling your home. This is often the approach coupled when you're already doing a remodel. Um, and here, one of the main differences is that you do an energy assessment uh, with this program, whereas with Home Upgrade, you do not. Um, and for advanced home upgrade, all of the measures in home upgrade are covered for the rebates, um, and they have more. There's more available through that advanced home upgrade program. All right, and then for home upgrade, there's, a, there's the whole menu on the back of your sheet, because I know this is kind of difficult to read, uh, but we have, we have two kinds of measures. There's base measures and flex measures. The only requirement to working through these rebates is just to choose three. You can choose more than three, of course, uh, but you choose three, a minimum of three. And there are different point values based on their energy efficiency. And the base measures, which you see at the top, uh, such as duct sealing, building air sealing, and attic insulation, when you choose those base measures, you get bonus points uh, for choosing one or even more than one. So we have what's called base measure kickers, which just all add money to your rebate. So you can look at the menu, you know, think about what you might want to do, and I think our participating contractors would be happy to talk to you about what might work for you. And I wanted to run through an example package uh, to demonstrate kind of what that would look like. So for example, an HVAC package, let's say you want to do duct sealing, add in consolation, and replace your furnace. Uh, so you're doing two base measures and a flex measure. You get that second base measure kicker. So they're really easy ways to boost up your rebate amount. So you get the added 15 point bonus and you end up with 
$1,550. And just to kind of demonstrate how you can really boost up your rebate amount, if you add duct insulation and air conditioner, you can boost your rebate amount to 260 points with this HVAC package. All right, and then the second package I wanted to show you was with the domestic hot water. So let's say this homeowner wanted to do some basic duct sealing, some air sealing, and adding insulation, and then get a tankless hot water heater. Then you end up with 250, you start with 250 points, and then with the, or you end up with 250 points when you add those base measure kickers. And so this is an attractive pro program to people who kind of already are maybe looking to do some of these things, and you can just work off of this menu to, to figure out your rebate amount. And I think what's a huge selling point for our program is our Home Upgrade Advisor service. This is a free service that's available uh, through Bayren, and these are building professionals that are on staff to support homeowners step by step through the home upgrade process. They, they're not salespeople, they're not the contractors who are actually gonna do work on your home. Um, so they're, they're impartial, they're, they're there to support you. And what's, what's great about them is not only do they know about our program, and so they can talk you through uh, everything you need to know from the rebates to finding a contractor, any technical questions you might have about your home, they can also refer you to other programs in the, in the area uh, that might help you if, the, if you're not right for this program. So even if you're just thinking about doing any work, I, I would highly recommend you talk to them. Um, they're, they're a great support system. And so their number is here uh, at the 866 number, and they're also on the brochures you have and the paperwork you have. And if, you're, if you'd prefer, you could also go online and submit a form to, to work with them. But they're, they're very helpful, and it's something that our, our program really relies on uh, to, to you know, remove that barrier for the homeowner and anything that's confusing with our rebate system and, and with finding a contractor. And so I just wanted to share this case study that, uh, uh, from Burlingame. Uh, our a homeowner that went through this experience, um, Jeff Launder, he was a, home, a resident or is a resident in Burlingame and has been for almost 30 years. And he completed Advanced Home Upgrade in 2012. And so it's exciting to hear these success stories for people who go through our, our program. So when you start with some high utility bill and then you hear that this homeowner saved half of their utility bill, like that, that's, that's the results we like to hear. And um, of course it's different for every homeowner, different for every home, depending on your behavior and everything, but it's great to hear that he had such a great success. Um, so in addition to the money savings, he also feels that he increased the, the, hum, the home comfort because it was no longer drafty. He no longer runs out of hot water, and um, he was happy to be also alerted to other issues going on in his home because he found out there were leaks in his roof. So it so really worked out for Jeff. Um, and some of the measures he did um, he removed ducts that had asbestos. Uh, he sealed the whole house, um, installed a smaller furnace, and a water heater, and then ventilation system. And so we're really excited that uh, we have his story to share, and we also included a case study for you guys to read more about if you're, you're interested. Uh, I included this slide on PACE financing. Uh, it's it's financing for energy efficiency, uh, renewable energy upgrades, and water conservation. And so we have programs such as California First and Hero. Are they both active in Mulbray? California First is active in Mulbray. And so you can find more information online if you want to look into financing options. Um, so even if you're not a Mulbray resident, there are uh, PACE providers active in San Mateo County and throughout. And then, finally, this is our website, um, bayareaenergyupgrade.org. Uh, I encourage you there to, to go there and find more information about our program. Uh, we have information on our contractors. We also have information on our frequently asked questions. So if you have anything 
um, you can try there first. If not, again, the Home Upgrade Advisor is a great service you can work through. And then maybe if you're already steps ahead and already interested in doing some work, you can talk to one of our contractors here tonight or look up a contractor online. You can find contractors based on location, based on the languages they speak, or based on the program they do. Because some do home upgrades, some do advanced, and some do both. And so there are a lot of uh, resources we have available online. Um, and hopefully the handouts uh, that are with you today answer a lot of your questions as well. Um, and then if you are ready to be contacted by a home upgrade advisor and you just want them to call you, uh, you can come find me and we can sign you up and have you, have you on their list to, to give you a call or, or shoot you an email. And that is it for me. And I'll turn it over to Jesse to come talk about Peninsula SunShares. Hi, did you have a quick question? Yeah, so it's a fund off your PG&E bill, and it was commissioned through the CPUC. So it's a rate payer good fund. What does that mean? There's a line item on your PG&E bill, and that money uh, is what funds the, this energy efficiency program. So the, the utility, you, you pay as a rate payer. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. All right, great. Uh, oh, so I don't know if it's good volume or not. We'll just wait and see what she says. <laughs> uh, hi, my name is Jesse Denver, and I'm with Vote Solar. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about Vote Solar in a few minutes, but I'm here tonight to tell you more about the Peninsula SunShares program and how you can evaluate if your home could be a good fit for solar. Energy Upgrade California, of course, is a great way to reduce your overall energy use, both electricity and especially natural gas. I did the advanced um, whole house upgrade on my home. It's been four years now. And when we had our whole home evaluation done, I didn't know that we didn't have any insulation at all in our attic space. We had just bought in our house. It's a mid-century modern house. And when they gave me the report next to the picture, it said in capital letters, absolutely no attic insulation. So we did attic insulation, floor insulation, and then we also found that we had ducts that had asbestos as well. So we were able to remove those. So it's a terrific program and especially great for reducing that natural gas usage. Uh, so Peninsula SunShares is a community-wide solar group by program. And there are 13 communities in total in the Peninsula area that are participating in this program and offering it to their residents. And I'll tell you more details about which communities those are and next steps. And I'm also going to tell you tonight a little bit about how solar works and how it can benefit you. Um, but first, why would these communities like Millbrae want to help um, homeowners evaluate if solar could be a good fit for them? Well, you all are probably interested in solar, but there's this perception that solar costs a lot of money. And that high upfront cost used to be a very accurate perception. But the solar industry has done a really good job in bringing down the hard costs of solar or the costs that are tied to the actual equipment. So the cost of solar now is competitive with traditional sources of energy on the grid. Um, as a matter of fact, over the last three weeks, we've actually seen in the afternoon 30 
to 40% of, of all utility power coming from solar energy throughout the state of California. So solar energy is viable and it's here to stay and that's really exciting. 29% yesterday afternoon on the grid. So we're, we're seeing you know, really um, real world examples that are economically viable for the utilities and exciting for the industry. So that high upfront cost, if it's not tied to the equipment, what is it connected to? Well, solar companies, they have to spend money to get you to become their customer. They spend money on marketing and advertising. This is the web banners and billboards and radio ads that you hear to say, hey, come, come to us. We want to help you go solar. And that's the customer acquisition cost. Well, when we pool the buying power of a group of people, like multiple communities, and we have the solar community compete to win a program like Peninsula SunShares, we're able to provide them with a pool of potential homeowners that might go solar. And when we do that, we're able to reduce those customer acquisition costs, and they can pass those savings on to you. And those savings are actually quite significant because depending on the solar company, customer acquisition costs can uh, equate to about $1,500 to $3,000 of the cost of your system. So we're not just talking about a few hundred dollars here that you're saving um, when we you know, pool that buying power of a large group of people. Through a program like this, we're not only trying to reduce the cost, but we're also trying to reduce the complexity of the process. You guys are busy, you don't have time to cross-reference Yelp to see who has the most stars, who's gonna be around five, seven, 10 years from now, who has great equipment, warranties, customer service experience, longevity, who has capacity, et cetera. So through a program like this, we've done that upfront legwork for you um, so that you can simply receive a couple proposals from the pre-selected contractors understand if solar is a good fit for you, and if it is, you move forward with your project and you receive a discounted price through this particular program. <clears throat> um, the other important thing about a program like this, Peninsula SunShares, is that it's helping the communities who are offering this to their residents engage you in their climate action plans getting the community involved in helping them reduce greenhouse gas emissions and achieving their clean energy goals. Another thing that is important to note about this program is that it's not available for the next six months or the next year. It's a limited time opportunity. We're running this program through the spring and summer. And the reason why we are offering it for a limited time is because the solar companies, part of that soft cost is if they provided you with a proposal and you kind of hung on to it for six or eight months, they're gonna call you, see how it's going, have you made a decision, and that also equates to their soft cost. So we're helping to reduce that by offering the program for a limited time and really helping you come to a decision about your project and uh, helping you move forward. So who are the local governments that have come together to launch this program? Uh, you can see here there are actually 13 communities. Uh, the program was spearheaded by the city of Foster City, and Foster City said, you know, we really want to do this for our residents, but we work so closely with Millbrae and Burlingame and the county on all these different kinds of environmental programs. We want to see if they want to offer it as well. So uh, this is a really broad program, and we are collaborating with a number of different organizations, including the libraries, faith-based groups, um, local employers, to hold workshops, to conduct outreach using their internal communication channels, like email blasts and newsletters, to get the word out to residents. And just a little bit quickly about Boat Solar. We are a nonprofit organization. We work on solar policy across the United States um, at the state and local government level. So we are on top of 
renewable portfolio standards and community shared solar legislation. And we're all a bunch of policy wonks who make sure that there are no barriers to solar um, across the United States. And when those barriers pop up, we work to remove them to make solar a mainstream energy source in this country. Uh, so the program is being offered to residents in the peninsula area. Um, each of these communities recognize that they also have a population that grows during the work day. We have communities that have Facebook and Visa and Kaiser and all kinds of large employers where those people that come into these communities might not live in the peninsula area. So the communities, they said, let's open it up to people who also work in our community but live throughout the nine Bay Area counties. So if you have a friend or a family member, um, a coworker who you think might be interested in the program, you are welcome to direct them to the program website and offer them the opportunity as well. We really want solar to become contagious and the way that happens is between that peer-to-peer exchange. So there are a couple solar contractors here tonight and they are the selected contractors for this program. How did we choose them? Vote Solar issued a request for proposals to the solar industry um, that was really active here in the Bay Area. We made sure that they had experience installing quite a bit of solar over the last five years. We wanted to make sure that they really had the capacity to manage the potential demand of this program and experience to do high quality um, solar installations. There was a volunteer evaluation committee that was pulled together with representatives from each of the participating communities. Vote Solar, since we work on policy and we work with the solar industry, we act as the evaluation committee's technical advisor, but we don't actually have a voting seat on the, on the committee so that we are always independent, unbiased from that decision-making process. So this committee, uh, community evaluation committee with reps from each of the participating communities vetted the proposals not just on who offered great pricing but again the equipment that was being offered warranties financing options experience um, customer service we contacted their references etc and they ultimately chose <clears throat> two firms Sunrun and Skytech Solar both are headquartered in San Francisco. Both do business uh, within the program area. Uh, SkyTech doing business about 40 miles outside of San Francisco. They're a smaller firm um, who are offering program participants uh, a foreign made solar panel that is very reputable as well as an American made module or solar panel at a higher price point. Um, and the evaluation committee felt like they really wanted to offer program participants um, that option. Sunrun was founded out of uh, Stanford's MBA program. Um, they have been around for uh, more than 15 years uh, as um, acquiring a solar installation company called REC Solar. So they have one of the longest track records in the solar industry for doing installations. Um, they have really broad coverage. They work in the South Bay, throughout the North Bay, into Sacramento, and they do also have national reach. So you have two different um, flavors of companies, both working together to provide proposals to program participants. And when you sign up to receive a proposal, you can opt to receive a proposal from one, the other, or both. These guys, they've been coming to workshops now for a couple months. They're friends. They go out for beers afterwards. So there's no weirdness that they're both here. They're happy to refer you to each other um, and you know, give you proposals for you to consider to see what works best for you. So before I get into how solar works and why it's beneficial on your electricity bills, um, there are flyers uh, for the program all over the room. <laughs> uh, and this would be 
Um, your first step, if you didn't want to give your contact information to the solar companies tonight, you would go to the program website. Um, it's mygroupenergy.com backslash peninsula, and you would register. And when you register, you're just entering your basic contact information that comes to us at Vote Solar, and we don't share it with anyone except for the solar contractors. We then forward that to them um, the next day after you've registered, and they'll connect with you within three to five business days to schedule your uh, site um, evaluation. So the registration deadline for the program is you would sign up to get a proposal by the end of July, and you would sign a contract if you wanted to move forward with your project to take advantage of the discounted program pricing by the end of August. That pricing is about 15% off the average market installation cost in the Bay Area currently. So there is a really terrific discount in addition to the fact that there's been this pre-vetting process that's happened already um, to choose the contractors. So how does solar work? Well, the sun delivers to us every day, every hour, more energy than all the world economies use in an entire year, in one hour. So the sun is this amazing resource for creating electricity, also for heating hot water. Um, so the sun delivers to us photons. And solar panels, they take advantage of the photovoltaic effect, or the ability to create electricity from light. Those photons, when they hit the solar panels, which are made of a semiconducting material, which is silicon, the photovoltaic effect happens. And the way it happens is that the photons hit the silicon material and cause the electrons around the atom of the silicon material to break free. And then solar companies, they incorporate wires into each of the solar cells and can create a flow of electricity. It's a very simplified way of explaining how solar works, but solar is actually very simple. So in addition to installing solar panels on your roof, the companies need to install an inverter. And that's because solar panels create DC or direct current electricity. But everything in your home runs on AC or alternating current. So they need to change the flow of that electricity so that everything in your home can use the solar energy being produced on your roof. So if you were at home on the weekend and you were cooking and watching TV and doing laundry, all the energy that's being produced by your roof, you will use in your home. But during the week, you're likely not home, you're at work. Your solar panels are still gonna be creating electricity. So in addition to the solar panels and inverter, there's something very important that takes place, which is net energy metering. And all that electricity uh, goes through your inverter into a meter, and PG&E keeps track of how much energy your rooftop solar is producing, and that energy goes onto the grid where it is stored. And when it goes onto the grid, PG&E gives you credits for the generation on your roof. And those generation credits go into a PG&E solar savings account, your own personal solar savings account. And they're giving you that generation credit at a one-to-one -one value. So if you were at home using electricity at that time, you would be getting a one-for-one -one credit for that generation. I mentioned earlier that I work on policy. <laughs> Pol net energy metering is one of the most important policy mechanisms that enable solar in the United States. Without net energy metering, if you didn't have that mechanism to get credits for your generation, you would be giving the utility free power and there would be no solar industry because no one would do that, right? <laughs> so <laughs> we make sure that net energy metering laws that are in place, regulations, legislation, um, in different states, that they really benefit 
consumers. And we make sure that um, utilities don't try to roll those back to provide less of a benefit to ratepayers and consumers. So again, net energy metering enables you to get a generation credit for your power so that when you come home at night and you use electricity like you normally would, then you take those generation credits out of your solar savings account. You're using electricity on the grid, all your solar power went onto the grid, it's being stored there. Almost all the solar installations in the state of California and across the United States are grid-connected solar systems. So you are still tied to PG&E because their grid acts like a terrific battery. There hasn't been battery technology until recent announcements by Tesla that enable home energy storage. Um, the batteries that we are used to dealing with for off-grid systems like in the Santa Cruz Mountains or somewhere in Tahoe, they are expensive, they take up a lot of room, they um, are hard to manage, and in general, not a good part of the value proposition of solar. So we expect to see a number of solar companies in the next couple years probably adding battery storage as an offer, as an add-on to their existing solar customers. Um, so there's a few reasons why you wouldn't want to wait uh, for that to come, and I'm gonna talk about one now and one in a few minutes. The first is that the current net energy metering rules in California are very rich for the customer. You're getting that one for one generation credit. There's no kind of extra bill charge for solar customers. Um, utilities, they uh, tend to have a position that says, you know, maybe solar customers aren't paying their fair share of maintaining the grid because they're producing their own power, so we should apply a charge to solar customers. Well, we've seen utilities across the country try to put that um, expense at in excess of $50 a month as a fixed charge for solar customers. Um, and of course, we've intervened to ensure that um, that doesn't move forward. So in California, the current net energy metering rules are rich and really beneficial for you. Those are set to change at the end of 2016. Both solar is very engaged in what that looks like, but anyone who has a solar system before that change happens will be grandfathered into the current net energy metering structure. So that is one reason, aside from the discounted pricing through this program, that you would want to go solar sooner than later if it looks like it's a good fit for your home. What makes a good solar roof? The orientation, the sun rises in the east, sets in the west, and spends the majority of its time during the day in the south. So having a south, southwest, west-facing roof will yield the highest energy production for you. Um, what we don't want is shading. So even if you have fog and clouds, those photons still get through that and reach the solar panels to generate a little bit of electricity. When you have actual shade from maybe a chimney or a neighbor's tree or a neighboring building, the photons can't reach the solar panels at all, and so they don't generate any electricity. And they actually, even if a portion of your solar panel is shaded, because they are usually wired in series, like Christmas lights, it makes the production value of the whole system go down. So shading is one of those things that we can't have with solar. And that's the, one of the important reasons why having these solar contractors provide you with proposals um, is so beneficial. Because you can say, well, what's the average installation for a home that's 2,000 square feet or 1,300 square feet? And that's going to look different for every homeowner because your neighbor's tree will be different than somebody else with a 1,300 square foot home. Your energy load looks different than somebody else's. So getting a personal proposal for your home is really important to understand how much available area do you have on your roof, and they're gonna compare that to how much electricity you use, and then size a system for you that those two things come together. <clears throat> So quickly, let's talk about your utility bill. 
PG&E um, bills us on a tiered rate structure. Every month, we each start out with a bucket of kilowatt hours. That's how much electricity you use. And the first bucket <clears throat> is called tier one electricity. And tier one electricity, it just actually went up. So it's um, around 13, 14 cents a kilowatt hour. Once you use up that first bucket of kilowatt hours, you get another bucket. But that bucket is more expensive. It goes up and it's actually around 15, 16 cents currently, tier two, I believe so. Um, tier three then, if you use a lot of electricity, you're kind of getting up there, maybe you have a hot tub, teenagers, LCD, lots of computers going, there's stuff happening. You get into tier three and it jumps in excess of 25 cents a kilowatt hour. And then you get into tier fours and fives and it really jumps in excess of 35, 37 cents a kilowatt hour and then into the high 40s. And so if you are a high energy user, um, solar is really great for you because you are producing a good chunk of your own electricity and able to shave off those higher tier rates because you are first using all of your own electricity produced on your roof. And then if your system's not able to produce 100% of what you need, you're purchasing power from PG&E like you always would, but you're staying in the lowest tiers. Does that make sense? Okay, great. So let's take a quick look at a couple sizes of system examples. Um, the first is a smaller size system, uh, Sunrun and SkyTech side by side. They're both offering comparable solar panels. Um, both of the solar panels that these companies are offering are listed on the state of California's um, uh, approved list from when the state had their rebate available. No rebate anymore, it's all gone from the state of California. Um, so the products that they're offering are really reputable products and they have 25 year warranties. The, the modules or solar panels themselves. You can't buy anything that has a 25 year warranty. Um, so the pricing uh, on this smaller size system is a little different for the two companies. You can see that Sunrun's starting price is $3.50 a watt, and Skytex is a little bit more expensive. Smaller size systems, um, you know, they still have to send out the same crew and whatnot, so sometimes uh, smaller firms, um, they have a, a little bit higher price point for those smaller size systems. So let's just look at this. If you needed a small system, 2.6 kilowatts, there's a thousand watts in one kilowatt. So you just multiply that 2,600 watts by the dollar per watt price, and that gives you a base system cost. So you can see around $9,100, $10,000 for these two different companies. Now, the other important reason why you might consider going solar now rather than later is this line. And what this says is the federal ITC. And that stands for the Federal Investment Tax Credit. That is a tax credit from the federal government that is 30% of the total cost of your system. That too is set to expire at the end of 2016 and will not be renewed. So 30% of the total cost of your system is currently available until the end of 2016, extremely um, valuable. So what you see here is after that federal tax credit, the system cost comes down quite a bit. So you have $5,800 and about $7,000. So if you're spending about $70 a month, your return on investment for this system is about seven or eight years. So seven or eight years, well, your panels are warranted for 25 years to produce energy, they're actually rated to produce 80% of what they're originally going to produce at that year 25. So from year eight on to 25 and beyond, you're basically producing your own free power. 
And that's really the benefit of solar. Um, the pricing comes down as systems get bigger. This is for a five kilowatt system. So I just wanted to point out that um, Skytech's pricing comes down to $3.60 a watt, uh, very comparable to Sunrun's base pricing, which is at $3.50 a watt across the board for all system sizes. Yes, ma'am? Sure. So, for example, um, I, I have a very low electricity bill. I've, I went through Energy Upgrade California. My electricity bill is about $25 a month. So for me, going solar wasn't you know, a value proposition from an economic perspective, but I knew I was going to get an electric car and I wanted my home to be net zero energy. So just to power an electric car, you need about two and a half to three kilowatts of solar. If you're in a low energy user, maybe your electric bill is under $75 a month, you know, somewhere in that two to three kilowatt range could be a good size system for you. If you are in excess of $100, $150, and then you're getting up there, you know, kind of the four and a half, five and a half, six kilowatt systems is where you start to see the bigger need. Um, and on average, in the inner bay area, we see systems around four and a half to five and a half kilowatts in size. Did that answer your question? All right, great. So there are a few ways that you can buy solar, and I'll just get through them pretty quickly because there's usually a lot of questions here. You can purchase it with cash, and that used to be the only way that you could buy solar. Um, so maybe you had a savings account or some money in the freezer, and you decided, I'm going to buy my solar system. <laughs> if you buy your system, you own it, you get to take advantage of the tax credit on your April taxes, that 30% tax credit. Um, and uh, you will insure it with your homeowner's insurance yourself. It only added $4 a month uh, for me to, sorry, a year to add my system to my homeowner's insurance. And you will kind of monitor it and maintain it. Each of these companies have a 10-year workmanship warranty. So if anything happens with your system, they're going to come out and fix it. The other option is called a third-party ownership option. And this is where you hear the commercials. Go solar, no money down. We'll put solar on your roof and we'll sell it to you cheaper than the utility. And that's exactly what they're doing. So you have two options under this third party ownership. You can either through a power purchase agreement or a lease, put no money down, have the solar companies put solar on your roof. They're going to own it maintain it, monitor it, and insure it for the next 20 years. You're going to sign an agreement with them, and you're going to lock in the price that you're paying for power for that term of the agreement. This is really important. This is how city governments install solar, is through these third-party power purchase agreements, because you're actually hedging against the utility market being volatile in the future. You know exactly what you're paying for power, for the next 20 years and you're able to budget for that. Whereas when you just rely on the utility, we don't know what the utility's pricing is going to look like and so it's very uncertain and you're actually not able to budget for that. So no money down, if you did a no money down lease or power purchase agreement, every year it's going to escalate slightly the cost that you're paying for per month. You can buy that down if you had a little bit of money um, under your mattress or something and get rid of the interest rate. The other way to do it is through a fully prepaid power purchase agreement. And this is where the companies are going to um, model how much your system is going to produce over the next 20 years. And you're going to pay for that power up front. And then you don't have any utility bill except for if you have to buy excess power from PG&E um, and the taxes and distribution charges that PG&E is going to charge you um, anyway. Under both of these scenarios, the company takes the tax credit 
because they own the system, but they roll the value of that tax credit into what you're paying for the system or the power. So you're still benefiting from the tax credit. You're just not taking it personally on your own taxes. And they'll show you that on your proposal. Because they are a corporation, they also get to take another federal tax credit called depreciation. So they roll that on into um, your proposal as well. Well, if you decided to go with a lease or power purchase agreement, um, what if you move? Well, you can transfer the agreement to the new homeowner. This is what we see most commonly, commonly happen. Um, and we aren't really seeing any resistance from homeowners in buying houses that have solar that have these agreements. So the agreement just transfers to the new homeowner. We actually see that homes with solar are selling faster than homes that don't have solar. And there was a great study that was done out of Berkeley that showed that homes that have solar increase their property value by about $5,900 per kilowatt installed on the home. So solar is a great value proposition from that perspective of increasing um, the retail sale of your home. Note that there is a state law, back to policy, um, that makes it so that the county can't assess your home because you have solar and increase your property taxes, right? Because also you would never have solar if that was the case. So this is where policy comes into play. We get to create, create all kinds of fun policy. Great. Okay, so um, you can also buy out the system, take it to your new home, have them reinstall that. But you know, you know, then you have to pay the labor on that. So most likely, you'd want to transfer to the new homeowner and just sign a new contract for your new home. At the end of the 20 years, what happens? Well, at the end of the 20 years, if you decide, hey, you know what, I want the latest and greatest technology come take this off my roof, I'll sign a new agreement with you and you'll install that. That's one option. Another option is, you know, I'm done with solar, I'm good. I don't need it anymore. <laughs> um, they'll come and remove it for you for free. Uh, or you can buy it out at something called fair market value. And we're not really sure what fair market value is yet because there are no 20 year old solar systems on people's roofs that have some sort of estimated value. So the IRS requires all solar companies to state fair market value, but likely fair market value will be less than what it would cost them to send a crew out to come and remove the solar panels. So it's going to be a low, a low amount. <laughs> I don't want to say nothing because I don't know, um, but it will be a, a, a pretty low amount. So earlier you heard about PACE financing, and this is one other way that you can install solar. PACE stands for Property Assessed Clean Energy Financing. It is a statewide program that cities and counties have opted into, and it enables homeowners to basically put the cost of energy efficiency upgrades and solar energy improvements onto your property tax bill. And you pay that off on your property tax bill as a new line item over a longer period of time. So without getting into all the nuances of PACE, because all of these contractors who are here tonight that you're gonna be able to meet with can help guide you through the PACE application process. But just know that this is one more financing tool in the box for you to choose from. And when you get a proposal from one of the solar contractors or both, they're going to show you side by side what a cash purchase option looks like, what a month to month fully prepaid. And then if you decided, hey, you know, I'm really interested in PACE financing as well, they can help guide you through that. Um, so again, PACE is available and I won't go into that in too much detail. So this would be your first step if you didn't want to connect with the contractors tonight, if you do and you give them your contact information, they'll give that back to us. We are tracking all of the different residents who sign up and giving that information to the city so that they know how many residents participated in Peninsula SunShares and help us spread the word. The program website has all kinds of social media blurbs and all kinds of stuff for you to post to Facebook and 
download or print flyers, share them with your coworkers and neighbors. We can also host workshops for homeowners associations or neighborhood groups, faith-based groups. So we're happy to do that and you can connect with us via the program website to coordinate that.